so good morning students today we will discuss about the events in sexual reproduction okay first one, in the last class we had discussed already about the pre fertilization events okay in that two process will will be included that is gametogenesis formation of uh, gametes and the second one that is the gamete transfer so already we had discussed that one today we will go for the second event that is the fertilization What is the second event? That it is the fertilization. So here, in the sexually reproducing organism, this fertilization is one of the important or essential process. Because without fertilization, there will be no sexual reproduction. So what is the meaning of fertilization? Means uh, that is the fusion of male and female gamete. What it is? Male and female gamete. Okay, so here the male gamete will be the haploid and female gamete will be the haploid always. Okay, in whom? In the sexually reproducing organism, fertilization will take place. What is the meaning of fertilization? Means fusion of male and female gamete. So, such as this is the male gamete, which is tadpole in structure, and this is the female gamete, which is pericole in structure. So they both are going to fuse. And what is the resultant or what is the resultant product over here is after fusion, it will be the zygote. What is going to form? Zygote is going to form. And always the haploid, uh, sorry, the male gamete will be the haploid and female gamete will be the haploid. They both get fused means here they are going to form the diploid zygote. Okay. The next thing here, fertilization, one more term you can use for the meaning of fertilization, that it is the syngamy. The word syngamy and fertilization, they both are the similar word. Don't be in confusion. They will use syngamy or as well as the fertilization. Fertilization or syngamy. Sometimes uh, they will ask for one mark. What is syngamy? Okay, that is the fusion of male and female gamete. Okay, so here, next thing, some of the organism. So all this, this process uh, is taking place in most of the organism and that organisms should be sexually reproducing organisms. Fertilization takes place in the sexually reproducing organism. Okay, the next thing in some of the organisms like rotifers, in some of the organisms like the rotifers, lizard, honeybees, rotifers, honeybees. And some lizard, not all, some lizard, protifers, honeybees, some lizards, then in some birds like turkey, one of the example among the bird that is turkey. So, in some of the organisms such as protifers are there, honeybees are there, some lizards are there, some birds are there, where female gamete undergoes development without fertilization. Okay, see here, this is the development. After the fusion, when this, uh, before fertilization, this is the egg or ova. This is unfertilized. What it is? This is unfertilized. This ova or egg gets fertilized only after when sperm comes and meet with the that particular ova. Only after when there is a fusion with the sperm, then only we can say this has the this egg is the fertilized egg. Okay, before that it will be unfertilized. If egg gets fertilized with the sperm, then only further development will take place. What is the further development over here? That is the formation of zygote. Okay, but here in some of the organism, this egg. This is the female gamete. Ova, 
or egg worm, which is the female gamete, without fertilization. Okay, no sperm comes to the ova or fuses with the ova. Okay, without fertilization only, it will develop into a new individual or a new organism. Okay, there is no any other gamete which are going to fuse or to fertilize to this ova. Without fertilization, it the our further development will take place. Otherwise, we can say without fertilization, it develops a develops a new organ. Okay. And uh, that process without fertilization, a new organ is going to form. That process is known as the parthenogenesis. Okay. What it is known as? Female gamete without fertilization develops into a new organism. This whole process we can call it as the parthenogenesis. This is asked for one month. What is parthenogenesis? Means female gamete develops a new organism without fertilization. Directly that female gamete or a ova or egg is going to form a new individual. Okay. That type of fertilization or that type of process where a new organism is going to form that process is known as the parthenogenesis. Okay. In a normal fertilization, what happens means the male gamete fuses with the female gamete to form a new organism. See, new organism is first to there will be development of zygote, then embryo is going to form, then a new organism is going to form. So here, embryo, then a new organism. This is taking place in sexual reproduction or during the fertilization. But without fertilization, we can call it as the parthenogenesis. Okay, the next term here. Next topic is types of fertilization. Let's see that one. Here, there are two types of fertilization. That is internal fertilization and external fertilization. Fertilization. This question will be asked for three marks. Okay, what are the types of fertilization? Otherwise, differentiate between the external and internal fertilization. Okay, how much? That is for three marks. So, first we will see about the external fertilization. External means outside the body. Okay. Outside the body, if fertilization is taking place, that type of fertilization is known as the external fertilization. Okay. One more is there. Internal fertilization. Directly, I will find the differences of this external and internal fertilization. Okay, so see here, in first of all, what is the meaning of external fertilization means? Uh, fertilization takes place outside the body. That is external fertilization. And uh, internal means Fertilization takes place inside the body. Inside the body means that.
that is inside the female body. Okay. The females are going to produce the young ones. Okay. That is the female body. And here, outside means that we can write as the external medium. Besides this outside, you can write in a bracket that is the external medium. So here, in external fertilization, what is the external medium means that it will be the water. What is that external medium? That it is the water. Okay. So here, whatever in the external fertilization, for example, frog is there. Frog comes under the amphibians. Okay. From amphibians are there and bony fishes. Amphibians and bony fishes. Amphibians if you take up, that is the frog. Frog will lay the eggs where? In the water. Frog will lay the eggs in water. This is the water. Water means external medium. Outside the body, this is the frog. Okay, so here they are laying the eggs outside the body. Then in the water itself, this egg will hatch into the small tadpoles. Okay, then it is going to uh, form into an adult. That is the a new frog is going to die. Okay, so here whatever the gametes, they are going to lay the eggs. These are the eggs. X means what? That is the gametes. Female gametes. Yes, sir. These are the gametes. Sir. Then, here, the female, this is the female frog. And this is the male frog. This male frog also releases these forms in the water. Okay. Whether that female frog and the male frog know how much eggs are. See, if frog may, female frog is laying eggs, if it is four in number, then male frog knows that only four sperm has to release. Okay, in these conditions, what happens means more gametes are going to be wasted. Okay, they will not come in use because only certain, some sperms will meet with the eggs. We don't have the guarantee that all eggs are going to fertilize. Only some of them are gets fertilized. If sperms are highly motile, highly functional, then only it gets fertilized. Okay. At that condition, what happens means during external fertilization, the gamete wastage will be more. Or the gametes are going to waste. This is one disadvantage of what? Of the external fertilization. Okay. The next thing here. See, tadpoles are going to form. Then, next thing, a frog is going to form. Tadpole means it will be not too much big. Immediately after hatching from the egg, the small small tadpoles will be there. And if eggs are large in number, then tadpoles also will be large in number. Okay, so predators. Predators means the animals who can eat to these tadpoles. Okay, that threaten will be more. That fear will be more. So that the number of the frog or the tadpoles are going to reduce. Because many other animals will be living in that, uh, in that particular water body. That animals may eat them by that. Eating that tadpoles or the small, small frogs. Okay. But here in the internal fertilization what happens? Means uh, the fertilization will take place inside the female body. Okay. And the next thing here, the gametes sir, are not going to be wasted. Or the gametes are not wasted. Why? Yes, sir. The male gametes will be more in number. But the female gamete during each cycle. Only one female gamete is going to form. Yes, sir. In this condition, the female gametes are not going to be wasted, but the 
male gametes can be restricted. This is one thing. Second thing here, the chances of survival here, I what I told, the predators will eat that small small frog or some fishes. Um, okay, so in that condition, what happens means chances of survival will be less. Chances of survival will be less. Yes, sir. The, because there is a fear to that small fishes as well as to the small frogs, uh, some other big animals can feed them. Okay, that is the chances of survival will be less in external fertilization and chances of survival will be more in internal fertilization. As you know, the female body is going to nourish the young one inside the uterus or inside the womb. Okay, due to which there will be no fear of any predator or any other organism for their survival. That is the reason the chances of survival will be no. Chances of survival is no. Okay, because here the female body is responsible for taking care and protection. For what? For the young one. This is the reason, okay, due to which the chances of survival will be more in the internal fertilization as compared to the external fertilization. Next, row, what are the examples? Here I have written the examples of external fertilization and there internal fertilization, what are the examples means? So, that is reptiles, birds, mammals, examples, reptiles, birds, mammals, if you talk about the plants, if you talk about the plants, it also includes bryophytes, pteridophytes, angiosperms, and gymnosperms. Here also, in all these classes of plants, fertilization will be internal as you had already studied. Okay, fertilization is going to take place inside the female reproductive structure. What is that female reproductive structure? Here, stigma, style, and ovary. The pollen grains are going to be wasted, but not the ovules. Ovules will be located inside the ovary. That is the thing, the chances of survival will be more in flowering plant, not only in flowering plant, in all the other plants. Okay, so in all these classes of plants, which fertilization will take place? That is the internal fertilization will take place. So, and the thing is that here in the plants and all, they, not, they are not going to fuse. Means uh, a copulation is not going to occur. The pollen pollinators are the, uh, they are going to carry the male gametes towards the female gamete. Okay, the next, uh, this is about the fertilization. Next event is the post-fertilization event. So, let's see about that now. Third one. Post fertilization even. Okay. Here, this post fertilization event, uh, see, in after sexual reproduction. Whatever the development will take place, that is known as the post fertilization. Here you see after fertilization or after sexual reproduction,
after sexual reproduction, the formation of gamete or the formation of zygote. Formation of zygote is called, or all that developmental process are called post fertilization event. Here, first we will see about the zygote. Here, see, in all sexually reproducing organism, sexually reproducing organisms, the fertilization will result in the formation of zygote. Just now what I told you, here, fertilization, results in the formation of formation of zygote. Just now I told you that a male gamete fuses with a female gamete. In all sexually reproducing organism means where there is a sexual dimorphism Sexual dimorphism means the male and female will be distinguished. Okay, they are going to produce the male gamete and female gamete into different individual. They will get fused in all that sexually reproducing organisms. What is the result after fertilization? Means that is the formation of zygote. That mm -hmm. too, this zygote will be the diploid zygote. Okay, why? Because haploid female gamete fuses with the haploid male gamete which forms a diploid zygote. Okay, the next thing here, in organism with external fertilization, just now we had talked about the two different types of fertilization. In external fertilization, whatever the organism which exhibits the external fertilization, whether in them the zygote is going to form in them, what happens? The external medium will be the water. Okay, the zygote is not going to form inside the female body, but the organism which exhibits internal fertilization in them, there is a formation of zygote, not in the external fertilization. Or the organism which exhibits the external fertilization the, the external medium will be the water and there will be no formation of zygote. Directly the egg will hatch into the tadpole. Okay, then here in the internal fertilization, what happens? After fertilization, a zygote is going to form. So, this zygote, further this zygote will develop into the embryo. Then this embryo will further develop into the a new organism. How? Means uh, in different types of organisms. See, we are talking about not only about animals, we are talking about all the organisms. Algae, fungi, animals, plants, and all organisms. So, in among all the organisms, the zygote development is different. Means uh, whatever the zygote which is undergoing into a development for the formation of embryo, then into a new organism, that developmental stages will be varying or the developmental stages will be different. So, on what basis that developmental stages is there? Means that is on the basis of life cycle. On what? That is on the life cycle of organisms. In class view, first you had studied about the diplontic life cycle, haplontic life cycle, haplodiplontic life cycle. Okay. In all of them, the life cycle will be differing. Okay, the zygote, how it is going to develop into a new organism. Then, here in animals, if we take it, so the zygote will undergo into the division. 
which division will serve that will give the mitosis okay mitosis you know that is also known as the equational division okay zygote will develop see here i will show already it is diploid what it is this is the zygote this zygote will undergo into the division which division mitosis then it will form a two cells which will be the diploid then from two it is going to form four from four and all that cells will be the diploid from four a large group of cells uh, which is similar in structure and function it will form a specialized tissue yes sir it will form means four further it will divide means 16 16 cells are going to form 16 further it will divide means 32 cells are going to form if many cells are grouped together into a similar function and into a similar structure then a tissue is going to form that tissue will develop into the and that group of tissue is developed into the organ then from organ a new organism is going to form in this way in mammals birds and reptiles in this way the life cycle is going to continue but in plants uh, that is in the angiosperm gymnosperm teratophyte bryophytes and all the zygote will undergo into a rest period okay what you had studied in the last chapter zygote will develop first it will undergo into a rest period then they will start to divide mitotically to form a two cell stage that is a pro embryo globular embryo heart shaped embryo then into a dicot embryo or a monocot embryo that means in plants the zygote will develop into the embryo and ovules will develop into the seeds and ovary will develop into the okay so we have talked about the zygote next we will talk about the next uh, uh, structure that is the embryo how the embryo is going to form so let's see here Next topic that is the embryogenesis. In post fertilization event, first is the zygote and second is the embryogenesis. Mitosis. Okay, and uh, here uh, means zygote will uh, during embryogenesis, what happens means zygote will undergo into the mitosis. That is the cell division. Mitosis is what? That is the cell division. Cell division, or else we can also call it as the cell differentiation. Okay, the next term here, when cell division increases in number, then that group of cells are going to form a tissue. Then this tissue will form an organ, then into a new organic. Okay, then here this uh, zygote, why a group of cells are the number, why it will undergo in the mitosis, cell division will take place or cell differentiation will take place. This zygote will, why it will undergo into the cell division, first it will form a embryo. This embryo will further develop into the tissues, then into the organ, then into the organisms. So, this is about what? About the embryogenesis. The next uh, here, the animal altogether these animals are categorized into two forms. What are that means? Oviparous and viviparous. That is on the basis of whether the animals are lay, or whether the animal lays the egg or not. On the basis of that, there are two types of animals. What are that? Oviparous and viviparous. So let's see that one.
animals are categorized into two types. What are that? One means one is oviparous and one more that is viviparous. Two more questions. What is oviparous and what is viviparous? Sometimes only what is ov or vv they will ask you. So based on the what? Based on the whether the animal will lay the egg or what. Okay. So what is that egg? That egg will be the fertilized egg. Fertilized egg means what? That it will be the zygote. When the egg is going to be fertilized, before fertilization, the egg will be the unfertilized. Okay. When it gets used with the sperm, that egg will form a zygote. Or that fertilized egg, we can call it as the zygote. So, this division is based on, based on the zygote formation. Zygote means that is a fertilized egg. Based on the zygote, there are two categories of animals, OB and viviparous. See, in some of the animals, as I discussed, external and internal fertilization, zygote development will take place inside the female body and in some organisms, zygote development will take place outside the body. Not zygote, directly egg will develop into a new uh, what we call it, tadpole than into a frog. So here, zygote formation will take place inside the female body or otherwise you can also write inside the female reproductive organ. Female reproductive organ. Okay. So, or takes place outside or inside the oviparous animals like the Oviparous means, as I told you, animals which lays eggs. Eggs. They are known as the oviparous. What are the examples? Means reptiles and birds. Example: reptiles and birds. Okay, then next up, the fertilized here, whatever the zygote is going to form, this one, or the fertilized egg, what we are calling, it is covered by a calcareous shell. For example, this is the fertilized egg or the zygote. Here, it is covered by a calcareous shell. Shell. Okay, so this egg with calcareous shell, if it is laid, see here, in reptiles and birds, they will lay the egg in the environment. Okay, so here the eggs are exposed to, to the environment, environment as well as to the predators. Okay, if more temperature is there, more wind is there, there will be chances that egg may get destroyed. Due to the presence of calcareous shell on the egg, there that chances will be less. Okay, so here this calcareous shell it is one of the protective cover to whom to the fertilized egg. Then this zygote or fertilized egg will undergo into the incubation period. As you are familiar with how the hens or the birds are going to produce the young ones. First they will lay the eggs, then uh, they are going to sit on that. For what reason? They are providing the heat, temperature to the eggs. So that they can produce the young ones. So that after incubation period, this zygote or the fertilized egg, it is going to form a new seed. After incubation, it will undergo into the hatching process then a new organism or a new individual is going to form. So all these things about what? About the 
oviparous animals. Okay, and on the other hand, one more type is there that is the viviparous. So let's see about that one. Second one that is it is viviparous animals. Viviparous animals means of where the animals that is majority of mammals. What it is? Majority of mammals, including human beings, zygote will develop. Zygote develops inside the Zygote develops into a young one. Zygote develops inside the female body. And the viviparous means animals which which directly give birth to the directly gives birth to the young ones. Okay. Directly they are going to give birth to the young ones. So most what is the example means most of the mammals. You can take an example of human beings. Where the fertilization will take place inside the body as well as the young ones are going to develop inside the female body. Okay. So after attaining a certain growth stage. See here, fertilization will take place inside the body. Zygote formation is also going to take place inside the body. Okay. Here, the female body or the female womb is going to give the protection and care to the young ones. Then, after a certain stage of growth, stage of growth, these are animals or most of the mammals will deliver a young one. Okay, they will deliver a young ones and uh, there will be a proper care and protection will be taken. Proper care and protection inside the female body. That is going to take place in whom the PV packs. Not only in the human beings, in other animals you can say See, in other mammals also, you can see this type of care, protection, delivering a young one after a certain period of time, this all will take place. And here in the viviparous, as compared to the oviparous, survival, chances of survival will be more as compared to the oviparous. Okay, then how the zygote will form in the flowering plants that we will see here. This is about the animals and you will see about the plants. In plants, zygote is formed in angiosperms, especially in angiosperms. Zygote will develop inside the ovule. Zygote will develop where? That is inside the ovule. This all process you had studied in the last chapter. Okay. After fertilization, as I told you, whatever the sepals, petals, this will wither off. Wither off means they are going to drop off or fall off. But in some plants, as I told you, in brinjal, strawberry, that petal sepals will be remaining there only to give a support to the particular plant. Sorry, that is to the flower. Then here the pistil, see, sorry, the zygote develops into the embryo, then into the huh, the zygote. 
will develop into the embryo then ovules will develop into the seed and lastly uh, ovary will develop into the fruit sometimes they will ask for two marks what is that means explain the post fertilization events in the plants okay post fertilization events in angiosperm or fertilization this will be asked for two marks if you write these much points that will be enough these three points are very important okay so here uh, this whatever the ovary which develops into the fruit it uh, develops a thick wall this is the fruit means there will be development of thick wall that thick wall is known as the pericarp thick wall thick wall around the fruit that it is known as the pericarp which is protective in function so this is all about the fertilization pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization okay this ends your chapter over here next term, i will continue with the third chapter that is the human reproduction in the next class okay thank you